Item A is the introduction of a rate study team for the City of Flagstaff water, reclaimed water, and wastewater cost of service, rates, and fees study. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Erin Young, Water Resources Manager. And tonight, uh, we're excited to introduce to you our team um, for the embarking on our, our rate study. So this is a longer term study. We're looking at about a year from now, um, adopting any changes to rates or fees. Um, our city team is pretty broad. It includes a number of folks in water services, but also our finance team, Rick Tatter and Brandy Suda, um, as well as Sarah Langley on communications. Uh, just as important, the financials, getting the financials correct is to this study. It's also important that we have uh, community engagement and a lot of engagement through our city council and water commission. So with the introduction tonight, uh, Santec will pre uh, present the process for the study as well as the outreach plan and a timeline and we would love your feedback. Now is time. If you have any ideas or questions, let us know. And we're at the, the start of, of this um, marathon. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Carol Molesky, our project manager with Santec, and she'll take it from here. Thank you, Erin. Good afternoon, Mayor and members of Council. I hope that you can hear me okay. We can. Excellent. Thank you. As Erin mentioned, we've embarked on this rate study. As you could see from your screens, this is a water, reclaimed water, and wastewater cost of service rates and fee study. I'd like to start because I have all of my team members here online. We'd like to introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit about ourselves. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about our process and the current milestone schedule. Then we'll be happy and love to talk with you about your questions. I'm going to start with me. As you know, my name is Carol and I will be the project manager. I am the project manager on this study and I've been working with Aaron and Shannon Jones and Rick Tatter and other members of your team for quite a while here. My background is in agricultural and resource economics. So I'm an economist. I've been working in the financial analyses field for more than 25 years. I'm currently located in Cleveland, Ohio, but I made my start in Colorado and New Mexico. I work on rate studies, fee studies, everything to do with water, wastewater, reclaim water, storm water across the nation. I'm really thrilled to be working with your team of great people, as well as my team. And I'd like to turn this over to our project director, Andy Burnham. Thanks, Carol. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mayor and Council. My name is Andy Burnham, and I'm serving as the project director for the study. So while I'm out of Tampa, Florida, like Carol, I've been spending over 20 years doing utility rate studies across the country for municipalities of all shapes and sizes, from communities with 800 customers to communities like New York City with 800,000 customers. So I've um, taken on leadership responsibilities with the American Water Works Association, um, associated with management um, and rate related issues. So I lead the management leadership division for AWWA. I'm the chair, which oversees the rates and charges committee and the publications of rate making manuals for large and small systems, as well as financing. So this is very much um, near and dear to my heart. I've spent a, a better part of my career um, investing a lot of time trying to help innovate in the industry and bring best practices to all the communities we work with. So I find myself doing a lot of work in Arizona these days not only with yourself, but also with many communities. So we kind of bring the best of both worlds in terms of national practices and understanding and benchmarking, but also what's going on locally through our work with communities like Phoenix, Queen Creek, Surprise, uh, Tempe, and others. So looking forward to engaging with yourselves and the community um, in the conduct of the study. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Tim to talk a little bit about himself and his role in facilitating that. Thanks, Andy, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tim Hancock. Um, <clears throat> I uh, have about 33 years of background and experience in uh, planning from urban planning all the way through public outreach and engagement. I've had the great pleasure of working with Andy and several of his teams throughout the country on everything from rate studies to creation of stormwater utilities and so forth. Um, over the past 10 years, I've increasingly focused uh, my practice on, on supporting local, state, and federal clients throughout the country uh, on projects such as this, really making sure that the outreach and engagement platform that is created is both meaningful and informative for the community. And so 
I think you'll hear me say throughout this process, our goal is to inform and educate as well as to gain feedback. And uh, working with Sarah Langley and a lot of your very talented staff, I look forward to bringing that forward. Uh, and I will turn things over for introductions to Rob McCandless. How's that for giving um, you no warning, Rob? Hi, How did I'm on you, you okay? All right. Thank you. Uh, hey, I'm Rob McCandless. I am based out of uh, Tempe, Arizona, and our Stantec office down here. And uh, I've done most of my career in Arizona. As a matter of fact, one of my first projects as a water wastewater engineer was on the Rio de Flag water reclamation plant when it was under construction. And I've continued to do a lot of work. I'm currently uh, the uh, Stantex National Water Reuse uh, Practice Lead. Uh, I did one of my recent projects a few years ago was also for looking at advanced treatment for City of Flagstaff. And I will turn this over to Zach. Thanks, Rob, and good afternoon, Council. My name is Zach Cook. I'm an analyst on the project. And um, I've been working at Stantec for about two years now. I've done multiple rate studies in the area um, in Arizona, uh, at Tempe, Queen Creek, Surprise, and also some rate studies in Southwest Colorado. And I am super thrilled to be working with um, the city and um, getting this rate study moving along and finished. So thanks. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Audrey Barber. I'm up in Washington. I've been with Stantec for about a year. I'm also an analyst on the project, so I work really closely with Zach and Carol on the data side of things, um, and I'm learning a lot. Thanks, everyone. And I'd ask that Tim gets us started on the, the next slide, please. Thank you. The rate study that we have started in May has quite a few steps. I'm not sure if you've seen the overview of the scope that you've asked us to work on, but we have started with the study orientation, of course, and public outreach planning. Public outreach in that first task bubble encompasses the whole plan. So you'll see that throughout this whole study. We're currently nearing the completion or at least the drafting of task two the 10-year financial plans. We're going to be talking with you about this step in the near future, but this is where we've been spending much of our time and a lot of your, your staff have committed many hours to working through these questions on financial planning and costs, et cetera, for water services. We are starting on task three, that cost of service analysis task, and then we'll move along to rate design. And the task five shows that there's a rate model. So we don't just do the study and leave you a report and walk away. Your staff will have a model to use going forward for future planning and future scenarios. We'll be preparing reports and presentations on recommended rates. So that's the whole span of the study over the next year that Erin mentioned. And I'd like to dig a little bit more into the details of this study. The rate study process answers three basic questions. How much do, does water services need to recover from its customers? This is called revenue sufficiency or financial forecasting. We make sure that this analysis achieves your financial policies for the water system, the wastewater system, and the reclaimed water system. We're focused on those three utilities. We want to make sure that we're sustainably and equitably funding your system needs. The second question is from whom do we get this revenue? This next set of tasks is a cost allocation task. We don't make things up. We use the American Water Works Association and the Water Environment Federation to guide our processes. So we're going to be looking at allocating costs and determining which classes of customers cause which costs and how to translate that into recovering costs from those customers. And then finally, how do we collect the revenues that are needed? This is that last step, that rate design step where we develop simple, simple, equitable, and sustainable rate designs for each of the three systems. We want to balance multiple objectives through this rate design phase. And you'll have a lot to do with that as we go through some of the steps and the questions that we have for you. On the next slide, we list something that has really driven 
your need for this rate study that we understand and what we're doing in this rate study. These policy strategies were developed in the rate study, and these came from you and from Water Commission members and stakeholders that we under understood were concerned about addressing specific strategies. Strategy one has to do with implementing water and wastewater rates and charges that are legal, fair, equitable through that cost of service study. That's exactly what we're doing and what our primary uh, driver is here. Strategy two deals with developing the long range financing plan to determine the funding needs of each of the systems. That's what I mentioned is where we, we've been spending most of our time lately. Strategy three is to establish those fees that cover the costs of service and to make sure that regulatory requirements are met as well as all the other requirements that are needed on a day-to-day -day and annual basis. And then strategy four, discuss forward thinking or new opportunities for how rates and pricing strategies can help achieve the goals of the utility. So we know that I mentioned you're, we're using by the book methods. However, we focus on your unique characteristics, your customer's unique needs and the city's unique goals and desires. So we, there is some flexibility there. We will be, we will be creative, but not um, illegal. So, but we will be making sure that we address your needs through this whole study. Looking forward, we're going to be talking with you frequently throughout this process. This schedule shows quite a few different steps. So we started at the top in May of this year. You'll see that there are some some stretches of time where we're going to be meeting monthly. We'll be meeting monthly with updates to the Water Commission. We'll be meeting monthly with you to get your feedback, keep you updated on each of these tasks and each of the phases of these tasks. The orange areas represent public outreach and opportunities to gain stakeholder input. We also know that we're working for that orange area that's kind of by itself, that is the your retreat where we're going to come talk with you for about a half day and talk you through a lot of the the decision points during this rate study so that's october 12th you'll get to meet us and we'll get to meet you in person and you'll get to meet us in person then after the technical analysis is done approximately around january of next year we're going to be writing reports and conducting meetings with you to make sure that we are in line with your goals and needs over the remainder of the, the study so that you could adopt or approve the rates that you're comfortable with and the approaches you're comfortable with and get them implemented by September of 2024. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim. Well, thank you very much, Carol. And if there was any uh, error in switching to slides too fast, that's on me. Uh, I'm the slide guy because Carol has, uh, is in between things right now. And, and if she has to step away, uh, she wanted to make sure we at least didn't stop the presentation. So I will own all of the mistakes. Carol gets credit for all the things that go well. Um, but I uh, just want to share with you a little bit about the communication plan elements, what they are, how they're going to be delivered. You know, one of the first things we've been doing and working with your staff is making sure we have a confirmation of the messaging elements. What are the things that your utility is focused on? And number one, first and foremost, is keeping it clean. Um, what does that mean? It means to meet or exceed the regulatory requirements. Um, and one of the things I, I explain to residents and communities all over the U.S. is we've become so accustomed to turning the faucet on and water coming out. When the 99.999% success rate you know, we take certain things for granted, but keeping that water flowing is a critical component of not just for your residences, but businesses as well. And the high quality of water is key. Um, and that's something you've seized on and done a, a very good job with. Uh, it's not so much that high quality water is an attractant, believe it or not, but if you have poor quality water, you certainly are gonna be known for it. So we wanna maintain that high quality of water throughout the community for residents and businesses. Uh, reclamation is increasingly a primary focus area of what we're looking at in communities. And again, um, you know, the city of Flagstaff is doing very well in this area, but, you know, can we always do better? Absolutely. So reclaiming water for tomorrow and treating it as the resource that it is, and as well as investing in efficiency. This is a focus of your staff to make sure 
a lot of your programs that are set up are making the most out of everything that you do. And so the efficiency is key. So all these messages build into a communication plan. And as, as I mentioned earlier, we wanna use the communication plan to educate and inform throughout the life of the study. Currently, your staff is working with some stakeholder mapping. You've got some great base maps built basically out of recent events and occurrences. We're gonna be creating a project specific website called cleanwaterflagstaff.com. That website will become the primary communication portal. So as things are developed in the study, they can be made public very easily, very quickly. Similarly, if the public has questions or concerns, they can post those through the website. They don't have to wade through any city directories. They can go straight to the website, pose a question, and we'll get that to the appropriate people. So that website becomes that, that, that key communication portal. The other thing we have, and, and Carol hit on this, is the regular updates to Council and Water Commission uh, monthly, if not more frequent. And on top of that, uh, we will have fact sheets, collateral materials, and we'll also be doing additional outreach meetings within the community. One of those is coming up this month. Your staff is holding uh, small group round tables within the community to gather information and input. And by the way, try, don't jump on that cleanwaterflagstaff.com address just yet. We've secured the domain name for you. We're in the process of working with your staff of building that website. Um, so these are all the elements that are gonna be part of the communication plan that again, is designed to educate and inform, but most importantly, to take some things that can be very technical and bring them to the conversational level. And so uh, you've got a fantastic staff that I've had the pleasure of working with so far. I look forward to continuing to work with them uh, as we develop this. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to either Carol or Andy. Uh, and I think we're to a point now where we're gonna address any questions or input that you may have. Thank you, Tim. And we, we would welcome any questions or feedback. Councilmember Matthews. Thank you, Mayor. So um, I think I feel like I need to get up to speed here a little bit. Um, our water department is an enterprise fund, correct? And I don't remember at our budget retreat that it was running in the red. So currently we're covering our services, or was it? So, <laughs> okay, I'll wait for Rick to answer that before I go on. There we go. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, Rick Tanner, Management Service Director. Uh, we always bring forward a balanced budget. So they did have a balanced budget this year and a balanced five-year plan. But there's a lot of things that they still need that aren't funded. And there's several things that are funded with one-time monies that are really operational costs that should be on an ongoing uh, basis. So they are having revenue strains to the operating expenses they have currently. Does that answer your question? Yes, kind of. I just, you know, right now with cost of living up here and inflation and, you know, I'm kind of, I, I just feel like, you know, we could have a big wish list and these are all the things we could just really do wonderful if we had all this stuff um, and how much of it is critical and are we going to pass that on to the rate, um, you know, payers. Um, I just try to be sensitive to that because we've increased some rates on some other stuff and we're just really pricing people out of our city and I'm just, I've got some major concerns about the end result I know is going to be increased rates. <laughs> and I just, maybe it's absolutely necessary to keep the quality of water and what we need to do, but I'm just wondering how we determine what's really necessary and what's a big wish list that you know, if we could just afford it and had all the money in the world, how could we, um, you know, pay for all this? So, I, you know, I just wanted to put that out there that I just feel a little uneasy about it. Okay, and, and I think that's what we're going to try and get out of this process. And I don't know if Carol wants to speak to it more, but we're going to bring you with some concepts and ideas of what rates could fund and what we can do and what we may not be able to do. Uh, during this rate study, but it's always good at least to do the rate study to get in mind at where you're at uh, with your your services, your revenues that are bring, being brought in. Whether council adopts the rates or recommendation, that's going to be up to, to you as, as a council um, uh, sometime next uh, late spring, early summer. So uh, we'll have a balance of that conversation. 
Any other questions? Councilmember McCarthy. Well, thank you, Mayor. I might just casually mention that the last time this rate study was done, I was on the Water Commission, so I was right in the middle of this thing. And I distinctly remember that the, the consultant we had at the time and the city staff and the Water Commission and then eventually the council were all very involved in the interesting process. So, Aaron, uh, I'll ask you a question. Um, I heard the phrase advanced treatment. At some point, we're going to have to address our chemicals that are in our drinking water, uh, chemicals of emerging concern, especially in our reclaimed water more than our drinking water. And I know other cities in Arizona have addressed this issue, but we have not yet. So, I mean, at some point, I think council's going to have to have a discussion about that issue with a lot of input and guidance from staff who are more knowledgeable about that issue. So, um, could you comment on that? Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mayor and Council Member McCarthy, um, that we know that that is a policy topic that will want to be discussed. So, our team is talking about that. Um, topic among others and how we work through that and it, it might get to Councilmember Matthews point of um, you know what what are the fundamental things that we're funding and then what are these additional things um, the important thing to remember is we're, we're meeting and exceeding water quality standards right now set by the state so that is going above and beyond but we will get there to have that discussion during the rate study Aaron, can you um, speak briefly to the outreach that you're going to do? We know that um, the stormwater rate discussion, um, I, I think, felt like it, uh, to, to some members of the community, it felt like they didn't know that it was being undertaken. So can you talk a little bit about that? I, I would like to, Mayor. Um, I'm not the expert. I think we have experts on, either online or with Sarah Langley who might uh, be able to talk to that um, with a more up-to-date information on our plan. Hello, Tim Hancock again. I know Sarah's coming up and I don't want to preempt her, but uh, Sarah, do you want to kind of kick things off and I'll fill in as needed? Okay, there we go. Thanks, Tim, for hopping on. Yeah, I think you gave a really great overview, um, very high level of the outreach plan that we have in the works. Um, I believe a communications plan is also being drafted right now. So that will be really useful in kind of putting some more meat on the bones and adding some detail in terms of, you know, who we're going to reach out to, how are we going to do it, and when. Um, but I think Tim would echo this, that we're really going to use kind of all the tools in, all, in our belt on this one. Um, we recognize that it's super important to reach out to everyone that we can. Um, I think Shannon Anderson said, you know, communicate often and communicate early. Um, so that's what's really going to drive our outreach on this one. Um, Tim, did you have anything to add? Really just building on that, one of the things we try and do on a study of this nature is we look for what I call the public intersection points. Where's information going to be coming forward in the study that will land in the public space? And then we want to marry up some type of an event or some type of an outreach component that stays slightly ahead of that. Well, you know, the, the surprises are the enemies in the public sector. And so we want to do our best to make sure that we are out in front of information before it lands in the public space. And we'll be working with your staff to do that. Your staff does a fair, does a really great job in, in engaging with the community. Um, we look to support and grow that for this process. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. The communications plan will detail some of that. But the things I want to uh, really bring out is no, no matter what communication plan you develop, no matter what plan you develop, you need to be flexible. And so as we go forward, if we find that there's a given tool that is, is really having greater reach than others and we want to expand on that and pull back on something else, we want to maintain that flexibility as well. But we will be starting with a fairly uh, solid communication plan covering as many aspects as is reasonable. Councilmember Harris. Can you just remind me when you said the uh, website would go live or did you say when it would go live? 
Uh, no, ma'am, we do not have a live date yet. Um, uh, we uh, just secured the domain name and are, are putting that together. Uh, so uh, depending on how much kind of reiteration process we go through, it uh, could be as soon as a couple weeks, could be as much as four weeks out, but sometime in that time frame, we expect it to go live predominantly before we see anything really coming out of any substance or value for the community to review. We will make sure that website is up and active. Okay, and then my next question might be a little bit more difficult to, for you to answer, but try anyway. So as we know, everyone is not collect, connected to the internet. And so even though we will put things on our website, how are those folks that are not connected in some way, either they don't have access to internet or they do not know how to use, you know, the internet uh, features or whatever. So is there a plan to um, do something for those folks? Because, you know, I'm always concerned about us always wanting to put everything on the web and everybody doesn't do that. And so can you talk a little bit? Yes, ma'am. And actually, that's it's a great question. It's one that we increasingly get in communities we work in. <clears throat> and so some of the things we look at are, for example, we want to look at um, uh, the broadband saturation rate by areas within the city. And by gathering that information, we're many times able to find what we will call underserved areas that may not have as readily accessible Internet capabilities as others. That's where we begin to target, for example, in-person meetings. We also want to locate those in-person meetings along either transit lines or in hub areas where it's easier to get to by folks that maybe have a, a little bit of a, a disadvantage when it comes to transportation. So the communication plan isn't just about putting forth information on a variety of platforms. It's making sure that each of those platforms will speak to a different segment of the community that may find difficulty reaching it otherwise. So. Uh, yes, ma'am, we will put that forward in the communication plan. And then, like I said, we are always open to adjustments. If we find that there's a part of the community that just isn't really showing up or doesn't seem to be, you know, connecting, uh, we can tailor and, and shift as needed. I hope that at least addressed your question from a high level. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Council? All right. Uh, thank you so much and we look forward to very regular updates. Thank you, Mayor and Council, and thank you, Stantec, um, and we'll move on. See you soon. All right, <laughs> thank you. Okay, before we move on to item number N, I mean, <laughs> 9B, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Okay, we are ready to get started back up. We're on.